last time we worked, we worked with input and output, and we, we created this Mad Libs program. I've posted this Mad Libs program in our notebook so you can refer back to it. But basically, the console right line will display text or values of variables to the console. And the console read line takes information from the keyboard and stores it in the corresponding variable. What I didn't tell you is read line exclusively works with strings. So even if you wanted to type in 13, it has to go into a string. So that presents a bit of a problem. Um, and what we have to do, so we still have to, we still have to use it in, I just realized I spelled this wrong. So we still, we have to read it into a string, but then we're going to take the contents of the string and convert it into a number variable because as you will see, you can't, um, you can't add strings. You can only add numbers. So if we put 13 into a string variable and then try to add that to something else, we'll get an error. So let's switch over back to here and I'll show you some of what I've done. So this you're familiar with. It's standard read line, I mean write lines and read lines with text. So that's not a problem. Now we want to enter an integer. So if they were to type in 13, temp's been set up to receive the 13, but temp is a string. As you can see, it's defined right here. And so I'm going to comment this out for a second and show you something. If I attempt to add the variable temp, so let's see, I'll do integer answer equals, I know I spelled that wrong, forgive me. But let's say that this equals temp times 13. Kind of a nonsense statement. But when I want to show you, this is indicating that there's a problem here. So when I highlight here, it says that the asterisk, which is how we multiply, cannot be applied to operands of type string and int. If I had int and int, it can't. I mean, it would be able to. But since we can't multiply strings, this doesn't work, which is why I didn't have it to begin with. So let me delete that. And I'm going to reactivate this line by taking away the comments. So now what's happening is I have whatever number I typed in being held as a string in a variable called temp. We need to take that variable and convert it. So convert is a class in C sharp just as console is a class and so it has many methods and 2int32 is the method that takes a string variable and converts it into a integer variable. So you can see up above I have two integers declared, num1 and num2. Um, if I tried to do something like this, num1 equals fun, that's not going to work because fun is a string. So similarly, I can't do num1 equals temp because temp is also a string. So both of these don't work because you can't take a string can't take a string and put it into an integer variable. So I will erase those. And we'll go back to our original solution, which is to take the string variable and run it through this convert method. And so what happens is num1 has the integer value of wherever I typed in. And so I'm going to run this so you can see that it works. Doo -doo -doo. OK, so I just put this in for reinforcement of reading strings. So I'm going to say that my name is Harriet. And we're going to do some adding. So I'm going to type in an integer. I'm going to type in 12. And I'm going to type in another integer, 9. And when I hit Enter, it says the sum of your numbers is 21, and we'll, we'll check out why this happened. I'll get back to this line in a second, but that line gets in the, uh, the next number, 
and then this line adds the two numbers, and then this line displays the sum. So that's pretty standard. I'll get rid of this window, maybe there, window gone. So what I did on this line is I combined these two lines. So I basically took what temp was equal to, and I replaced it in where I used temp in the conversion method. Um, so it's like doing two things at once. I didn't do that the first time because I thought it made, as beginners, I'm hoping that you can see that this, even though I'm typing in 12, it is a string and strings can't be added. So I have to take that string value and turn it into an integer and then that integer gets stored in num1. So that's what we have to do whenever we want to read a number from a, from the keyboard, from the console. We have to read it in as a string and convert it to a number. And um, we'll be doing that quite a bit. Over here in your notebook, what I've done, the video I'm recording right now will go here. But these are, this is a table on the Microsoft Supplement site. And there are a, there are more convert methods, but these are the ones you'll typically be using. So two decimal, if we are going to use the short decimal point number, back in data types, it shows you all the decimal, I'm sorry, it shows you all the data types we have. You probably won't be using two decimal, so let me go back down here, non-string input. Most of the time, you're going to be using these two, and this one. These are the numeric variables you most often use. Um, sometimes we need to use long. We could use short, but I just usually go straight to int. So typically you're going to need these three. So if you ever have to input a, a decimal number, I would say declare it as a float or a double. Um, so hopefully now you had a program to do the fortune teller one. And the fortune teller one expected you to input an integer. And I imagine things didn't go well because after you input it, you couldn't add because it was still sitting there as a string. Perhaps some of you Googled it and figured out the answer. But if not, this is the adjustment you're going to need to make to make it work. And so the code you're seeing in my Visual Studio has also been posted here because that will help you remember what to do. Um, so, sorry that I overlooked that. I hope this makes sense. And good luck with finishing Fortune's Teller.